This one is a medium difficulty GRE quantitative reasoning question. This question is from the topic geometry. What is the concept tested? Concept tested is basically concentric circles, area of different regions of concentric circles. What do we mean by concentric circles? Concentric circles are circles that have a common center, but circles of different radii. Have you seen a bullseye? Think of bullseye whenever you think of concentric circles. I've got a diagram of what we are going to be evaluating down the line, couple of slides down the line. So you will be able to visualize it at that point. Let's get started with the question. Three concentric circles of radii, 2 centimeters, 10 centimeters and 15 centimeters are drawn. The two quantities, we'll just quickly read what those quantities are. When we evaluate them, let's spend a little more time to understand what is to be computed. Let's read these two quantities. Quantity A is the ratio. We are finding out the ratio of area enclosed between the outer circle and middle circle to the area enclosed between the middle circle and inner circle. Essentially, it's a ratio of areas of two regions within these three concentric circles. So that much is good enough for us right now. Let's move on to quantity B. Ratio of the area enclosed between the middle circle and inner circle and the area of the innermost circle. This ratio is again ratio of areas of two regions of the same three concentric circles. What we finally need to compare is basically these two quantities and arrive at an answer which is going to be one of these four. These answer options as far as GRE goes do not change. So therefore, get conversant, memorize them. Answer option is A, if quantity A is greater than quantity B. Answer option is B, if quantity B is greater than quantity A. Answer option is C, if these two quantities are equal. Answer option is D, if you cannot determine them. Essentially, in one case, I am giving the height, in another case, I am giving the weight. These are not apples to apples which can be compared. What cannot be compared basically comes into D. Right? Get conversant, memorize these answer options, they do not change. Now that we have gone through this process, let us quickly look at what our concentric circles are. These are the three concentric circles we are talking about. The innermost circle is the white region. The cyan or the greenish region is the middle circle. And the dark blue region is the outer circle. So this is known to us. Radii are given to us. Radii are respectively 2 for the innermost circle. This is equal to 2. The second one, the radius is equal to 10 and the outer one, the radius is equal to 15. So we have radius of all of these three circles. We are computing the ratio of areas of different regions. So for that, the first and foremost thing that I'm going to do with the data available to us, I'm going to compute the areas of all of these three circles, the inner circle, the middle circle, the outer circle. We'll keep that area handy. We'll compute that, finish it off, subsequently get into quantity A find out which region are we finding out. Is it this? Is it this? We'll do all of that later. What is the area of a circle? Area of a circle is equal to pi r square where r is the radius. So for all three circles, inner circle, middle circle and outer circle, let's compute the area. I'll call it as ic inner circle. Area is equal to pi r square. It is pi into 2 square. I'm writing all of these steps. You guys should not be writing all of these steps, right? We know it's 4 pi. The next couple of ones itself, I'll cut down steps. As far as possible, we can cut down steps, you save time. The middle circle, we know the radius is equal to 10. So pi into 10 square, 10 square is 100, therefore the area of the middle circle is equal to 100 pi. The outer circle, radius is 15, pi into 15 square, which is 225 pi. So I'll call it as OC, which is the area of the outer circle, 225 pi. So step one, we have computed all the areas. We have computed area of this portion, we have computed the area of this portion and the area of the entire outer circle. We have computed all of these. Now let's step into quantity A. What is quantity A? Quantity A is the ratio of the area enclosed between the outer circle and middle circle. This dark blue region area is what is the first part of the ratio. Ratio has got two components. Any ratio, for example, x is to y can be expressed as a fraction as x upon y. x is the first component of the ratio. I am computing the first component of the ratio. Ratio of, leave that, area enclosed between the outer circle and middle circle. Outer circle and middle circle. This dark blue area is what we are interested. Area of the outer circle is 225 pi. Area of the middle circle is 100 pi. So 225 pi minus this 100 pi will give us the numerator of the ratio. 225 pi which is the area of the outer circle minus 100 pi which is the area of the middle circle is the area enclosed between the outer circle and the middle circle. The second component 
we are finding the ratio of this to the area enclosed between the middle circle and inner circle. Middle circle to inner circle area is basically this green area or the sine area. Middle circle area we know is equal to 100 pi. Area of the inner circle we know is equal to 4 pi. So this is the required ratio. Numerator is 125 pi. Denominator is equal to 96 pi. So the required ratio is equal to 125 divided by 96. Keep this number handy, we'll remember it, we are not going to compute what it is. If I have to take a call on this number, this number is approximately 1.25. 125 divided by 96, round it off to 125 divided by 100. It's a little more than 1.25 because the denominator is not 100, it is lesser than 100. So 1.25, 1.3, have that kind of an estimate, you don't need anything more than that. If the numbers are really close, we'll do the computation finally later on. Right now, this is all that we know, the value of quantity A which is the ratio of area enclosed between the outer to middle circle to the area enclosed between the middle to inner circle. That ratio is 125 upon 96. Let's move on to quantity B because once we compute quantity B, we'll be able to compare these two quantities. What is quantity B? It's again ratio, x is to y is what we need to find out here as well, which is the same as x upon y. What is the first part of the ratio? Ratio of area enclosed between middle circle and inner circle. Middle circle and inner circle, we computed it as the denominator of the last part. Middle circle area is equal to 100 pi. Inner circle area is 4 pi. So the area enclosed between the middle circle and inner circle is 100 pi minus 4 pi, which is equal to 96 pi. We'll come to that. Upon to the area of the innermost circle. Area enclosed between middle and inner, which is a numerator to the area of the innermost circle. Innermost circle area is equal to 4 pi. So this is the second ratio, quantity B. 100 pi minus 4 pi is equal to 96 pi. 96 pi divided by 4 pi. Pi gets cancelled with pi. 96 upon 4 is equal to 24. The next step is basically to do the comparison. Very simple comparison. Comparison does not involve any calculation at all. First quantity we know is 125 upon 96. This is quantity A. Quantity B we know is a 24. This is 1.25, 1.3, 1.4. It doesn't matter what it is. It's some number between 1 and 2. This number is a 24. Definitely quantity B is greater than quantity A. So answer option B is the correct answer to this question. That's all it takes. So don't waste time trying to compute what a 125 upon 96 is. If required, we'll do it. In this question, it was not even required. Just a broad random approximation was good enough to get to the answer. Quickly summarize the entire thing in about 30 seconds in a printed form. Computing the areas of all the three circles. Inner circle radius is 2, so 4 pi. Middle circle radius is 10, so 100 pi. And the outer circle radius is 15, so it's 225 pi. Start with quantity A. Quantity A is a ratio. The numerator of the ratio is the area enclosed between the outer circle and middle circle, which is 225 pi minus 100 pi to the area enclosed between the middle circle and the inner circle, which is 100 pi minus 4 pi. So this is 125 upon 96, approximately 1.3. This is good enough. In fact, I would have gone and said that between 1 and 2 would have been sufficient to answer this question. Move on to quantity B. So area enclosed between the middle circle and inner circle, we know that's a 96 pi. We did it in the last part itself. To the area of the innermost circle, which is 4 pi, this is equal to a 24. So we're essentially comparing 1.3 to 24. 24 is definitely greater. Choice B is the correct answer. Before you leave, I want you to do one thing. Have you tried, have you become a trial user with Bizaco's online GRE quant course? It's one of the most comprehensive and affordable online quant course. Starts from absolute basics, covers all topics, has adequate number of quizzes and practice tests, both of basic level and GRE level to get you to take a good shot at 170 in the GRE quant. Anything short of 170 in GRE quant, you're not doing justice to your GRE. GRE, verbal, is usually the tougher part for people of South Asian origin, for Indian origin. Quant is something we guys should actually ace it. So you have a good shot at 170. Become a trial user, you don't have to pay anything at all. All it takes is giving your email ID and your mobile number and verifying an OTP. The moment that is there, you can try out the free topics available. If you find the teaching methodology, the UI, UX, the iOS app, the Android app, helping you prepare effectively, then you can pay up and unlock the remaining topics. Best wishes for your GRE preparation. 